Hello, dear friends of Efficient Corporation! This Digidemo machine consists of different functional units. These units were planned and programmed by various employees in one single TIA portal project. This is possible using multi-user engineering within TIA portal. How you can use this for your TIA portal project, we will show you now. Several users are working on a common project and want to synchronize via a server. This screencast shows which steps are necessary to set up and manage such a multi-user working environment. The first step is to set up a multi-user server. This is the linchpin for the synchronization of the projects. The TIA portal multi-user configuration tool is executed for this purpose. A secure connection via HTTPS is recommended. This is already selected here. For this, a corresponding certificate is required which is automatically generated. The location of the server database can be defined accordingly. In the next step, the installation of the service starts, which has to be started once. We switch to TIA portal where our project is already open. The connection information for the server set up in the previous step must now be stored in TIA portal. The connection information such as protocol, host and port are stored here. The multi-user server can now be accessed via the context menu. Due to the encrypted connection, the certificate must be trusted. The connection to the multi-user server is now configured and established. However, there is no TIA portal project on the server that can be worked on together. This has to be uploaded first. For uploading, we use the offered wizard. The process can be simplified by setting the two check marks. After the project has been successfully uploaded to the multi user server, all participants can download a local copy of the project from there. This is called a local session. Administrative tasks are performed by the multi user administrator. For this purpose, a connection to the multi user server must also be established from the administration tool. In the left column, you will find the configured servers that can be administered. Due to the encrypted connection, the certificate must be trusted. Now possible administrative tasks are server-wide as well as project granular user administration. You can also see the local sessions and the history of the individual projects. Basic functions of the history are display of the different project versions, changed objects of a project version, export of a project version to a single user project and restoring all the project versions, which we call rollback. The following preconditions must be met for working in a multi-user environment. The multi-user server must be set up and the employees and the team have configured the connection to the multi-user server. The two OpenTIA portal instances currently visible reflect two team members each having a local copy of the server project open. User 1 is currently editing the conveyor block, which automatically changes the color of the flag. The flags can also be set manually. The coloring of the flags reflect the current status of the block. In your own project, the process blocks are marked with a blue flag. In the projects of the other team members, they are marked yellow and thus symbolize that another team member is already working on this block. If user 2 now also makes changes in another block, in this example in block filler, it is marked blue in its own project and yellow in user 1's project. If two users work on the same block at the same time, the block is marked with a red flag. The users have the possibility to synchronize the projects with the multi-user server. User 1 checks in his changes to the multi-user server, which means he loads his changes on the multi-user server. For a later traceability of the changes, it makes sense to assign a comment. After changes have been checked in on the server, a synchronization or refresh can be carried out. User 2 can also check in his changes on the multi-user server. During the subsequent refresh, the changes checked in by user 1 are automatically synchronized. In order for user 1 to also receive the changes from user 2, user 2 can also perform a manual refresh. 
At the next check-in at the latest, the changes would have been synchronized automatically. Now the changes are synchronized and both users have the same status. In a project, there are also contents that cannot be flagged and therefore cannot be synchronized. This includes, for example, the hardware configuration. To be able to make changes to these objects, it is necessary to connect directly and exclusively to the server. A green server symbol indicates that the server is not yet blocked elsewhere and that a connection can be established. As soon as the connection is established, the workspace is colored yellow and thus symbolizes that the server project is being worked on directly. For the other team members, the server is locked for the time of the treatment. This is indicated by the corresponding server symbol. All changes made are thus also saved directly on the server. After saving, the server is released again and the server icon indicates to the team members that a new version of the project is available on the server. In commissioning mode, the changes are automatically checked into the server project during the download from the local session, compiled and loaded into the device. Because of the automatic of the commissioning mode, errors are minimized in the workflow and time is saved. In order to test the handling and behavior of multi-user engineering even without purchasing a corresponding option, TIA Portal offers the so-called ad hoc mode. The multi-user server and the corresponding TIA portal instances are then located on a computer on which they can be tested. The ad hoc mode is started via the context menu. This is it! An easy use of multi-user engineering based on different scenarios. Good luck with the implementation in your projects! Siemens. Ingenuity for life.